Hey friends, this is Brittany from Universal Audio, and today we're gonna to talk about compression basics. Let's get started. Compressors and limiters are music production tools used to reduce the span between the softest and the loudest parts of an audio signal. They allow you to control the levels and when used properly, result in more professional sounding recordings. Here I'll explain the basic controls of audio compressors, the different compressor types, and I'll even give you some tips on how to use this in your own tracks. Whether you're using a hardware compressor or a plugin, there are a few common controls that you should be familiar with. The first control we're gonna go over is the threshold. The threshold is the level at which the compressor effect is engaged. For example, if the threshold level is set to negative 10 dB, only signal peaks that extend beyond that level will be compressed. That leads us to the knee. The knee refers to how the compressor transitions between that non-compressed state and the compressed state. Most compressors allow you to choose either a soft knee or a hard knee, but some will allow you to choose positions in between to give you more creativity to your flow. Next, we have attack time. This refers to the time it takes for the signal to become fully compressed after exceeding the threshold. Faster attack times are usually between 20 and 800 microseconds, and slower attack times generally range from about 10 to 100 milliseconds. Some compressors express this as slopes in dB per second rather than time. Then we have release time. You can think of this as the opposite of attack. It's the time it takes for the signal to go from the compressed state back to its original non-compressed state. Release times will be considerably longer than attack times, generally ranging from 40 to 60 milliseconds to about two to five seconds. Like attack times, these can also be expressed as slopes in dB per second. Here's a tip. Your release time should be set as short as possible while still avoiding that pumping effect. This is a common mistake when compressing low frequency material, such as an electric bass and kick drums. If your release time is set too short, you'll hear the compressor cycling between active and inactive states, resulting in a breathing effect. Next, let's talk about ratio. Ratio specifies the amount of compression applied to the signal. This setting is expressed in decibels. For example, a ratio of two to one would indicate the signal exceeding the threshold by two dB and being attenuated by one dB. A signal exceeding the threshold by eight dB would be attenuated down by four and so on. A ratio of one to one represents unity gain, and in other words, no attenuation. A ratio of about three to one is considered moderate compression, while five to one would be considered medium. Eight to one starts to get into strong compression and 20 to one is what we consider limiting, an effect that can be used to ensure the signal essentially never exceeds the threshold. Let's talk about output gain. Although we perceive compressed signals of being louder, compression actually results in the overall lower output this is where output gain or makeup gain comes into play. Output gain is used to make up for the attenuation achieved by the compressor. Some compressors provide meters to visually indicate the total attenuation in dB, allowing you to accurately apply the correct amount of makeup gain. Hardware compressors use either tube or solid state components for their output gain stage, which really influences the amount of color and character applied to your track. This perfectly segues into our next topic, which is types of compressors. There are four common types of compressors you should know about. Let's dive into those. The first type of compressor we'll talk about is the tube compressor. Tube compressors have been around since the 1950s and they're known for imparting warmth, color, and harmonics thanks to their tube gain stage. They tend to have a slower attack and release time, resulting in a more vintage sound. Well, take it or leave it, keeps me wondering. What do I know? 
Well, take it or leave it. The next type I'd like to talk about is an optical compressor. These employ a light element and an optical cell. So as the amplitude of a signal increases, the light element emits more light, causing the optical cell to attenuate the amplitude of the output signal. Next, let's talk about FET compressors. FET, otherwise known as field effect transistor compressors, emulate a tube sound, but with transistor circuits. They are fast, clean, and reliable, and perfect for punching up the sound of drums, vocals, bass, guitars, and more. Next, let's talk about VCA compressors. Fast and punchy VCA compressors, such as the SSL G-Bus or the legendary DBX160, are a category of solid-state compressors that add unrelenting character to things like drums, guitars, and a mix bus. All in all, compression is often used to limit the dynamic range of any given sound source, but they can also be used as a creative tool for tone, color, and texture. Understanding the fundamentals of what makes a compressor work allows us to have all the tools available to make better creative and dynamic decisions quickly. Read more about this topic at uaudio.com slash blog and look up audio compression basics. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.